How's it going everyone? So recently I made a video where I kind of made a tutorial Mern stack video and during that video I ran into a cores error where I kind of explained like what the cores error was and why it's being caused and I didn't really explain it too well so I figured hey I'm going to make a separate video about cores specifically to make sure I really understand cores and the same origin policy and how it all works and I wanted to explain that all to you. So if I say anything wrong in this video call me out. I'm always uh, glad to be called out when I explain something wrong. But by default there's something called the same origin policy which your browsers kind of follow. And basically, whenever your browser tries to make a request to a like a host name or domain that does not match the one that you're currently on. So if you look here, I'm actually on localhost. Uh, I'm actually on 127.0.0.1, and I'm actually on a different port, 5173. But if you look down here, when this app loads, it does a GET request to this localhost 5000 endpoint. And because these host names do not match, and because the ports are also different, we get back something called a cores error that you can see down here in the terminal. So first of all, I want to clear up some things about this error. Um, although the UI is getting this error, all this is doing is preventing the UI from reading the data that comes back across the wire, right? So I can't view what data I got back. There's nothing in the response to the preview. But I want to show you something interesting. So even though we're getting a cores error, if I actually go, I am getting a status 200, which means the backend is actually running some code. Now if I go over here and just go ahead and clear out this console, I want to show you. If I go to the endpoint, I guess it's called git deck x controller. If I go here to this endpoint and I add a console log, I'll just say we are here and save that. I'm going to go back, refresh the page, and you'll notice that it does print out we are here. So the backend is actually running. Like all the code that's in your controller, it runs. It still returns that data to the front end. The browser gets that data, but the browser actually blocks your JavaScript from being able to read the response due to this cores error, uh, which is this one. So I just kind of demo something in regards to the GET request, but when you do something like a POST request, your browser actually does something called a pre-flight request or pre-flight check. And what this is doing is basically it makes a options request to your backend, first of all. And the options request is to verify that your server is returning with the, the proper headers that you'd expect your browser to need to be able to do the real origin request. So for example, if I were to go ahead and just try to create a deck here, you will see in the terminal there's something called a pre-flight that fires. And this thing, first of all, is just basically doing an options method request to your backend endpoint. And it's expecting some certain things to come back in the response. And one of the things the pre-flight check is verifying is that when this response header comes back from the API, there is a header here called allow access or access control allow origin that actually has the same origin as this, right? So 127001. Now if the API does not respond with that response header, then it'll cancel the subsequent post request. So notice here, this was actually supposed to be the post request that sends the data to the backend, but this never runs because the pre-flight check failed. Okay, so this is another thing that you'll see sometimes with a cores error. And if I actually go to the backend here, so if I go to like create deck controller, and again I put like a console log, just put a gg and save this file, this code will not run at all because the options request the pre-flight check failed, which means that the post request is never invoked. So notice here there is no GG that prints out because this backend is never hit. So that's kind of an introduction of like the cores error that you'll, you'll see and how it kind of acts differently depending on the, the post request. It's a lot more complex than that. There's a whole diagram that kind of explains when this pre-flight header is sent out. It's not really straightforward, so it's kind of hard to talk about in a video, but I'll put this link up in the description if you want to walk through this. So you can also go to the cross-origin resource sharing article on the mozilla.org docs, and they kind of walk you through this and like what's going on. So if you're doing a simple request, right, so they call it a simple request, which meets some of these criteria. So if it's a get header post request and it has um, one of these header sets. You have to kind of dive into the details about this, like the different conditions. But in this case, like for example, content type. If you do a post request and your content type is set to one of these three, then no pre-flight check is gonna happen. So let's just try that out and verify that like we know what we're talking about. So let's just go here. I'm gonna go to the front end. And instead of sending a content type of application JSON, I'm gonna go ahead and just put text plain. 
And that should align with this simple request scenario that they're talking about here. So if I go back to the front end and just go ahead and cl click create deck, notice that no pre-flight check is fired. And if I go to the back end, we actually get that GG printing out now. So again, like the back end code is now running in this scenario. So the post request is actually going to insert data into the database. But when the request comes back, we get a cores error and that data is not going to be shown to the front end because that's the whole purpose of uh, same origin policy is we don't want to show that data if you are trying to request data from a back end that you don't own or you don't have. And there's more to talk about this. I'm going to show you how do you fix it and then maybe I'll talk about like why this is even set up to begin with. So if you're running this stuff locally, if you're running like an API locally, you probably run into this. And one way to fix it is you need to go to where you're setting up your server and you have to basically set a course header like this. So I'm going to go ahead and set a, I'm going to use a course middleware. I'm using Express. And I'm going to say set the origin to 127001 in that same port. So if I save this, let's go back. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to application JSON. And I'm going to go to my UI. And we are going to, again, refresh the page. Everything loads now. Everything's loading fine. If I go ahead and do a post request here, you'll see it does the pre-flight check. If we look at the pre-flight check real quick, what's, what do we get back? Well, now we get back access control allow origin in the response header. So this is kind of what I talked about earlier. W during the pre-flight check, the allowed origin is not matching the current origin you're on. Then again, it's going to cancel out your request. And there's probably more nuance to all this as well. Like, you know, the headers have to be one of these. So if you try to, if, if, if your API does not return a full list of all these, then again, your pre-flight check is probably going to fail as well. Um, but I wanted to just give a little overview of like how all this stuff kind of works because when you first see the cores error, it's not really intuitive like what's going on. So that's one way to fix it. Another way that a lot of people fix it, which you pr should probably never use in production, is you just put a star here. And this is going to basically do the same thing. But instead of returning, make sure I refresh my page, it was loading. If I go ahead and just do that request like this, notice that the pre-flight check is still firing. But then the response that we get back is allow control, access control, allow origin star. So the star basically means that like any browser with any origin can hit this API. Okay. Again, it's not the most safe in production because you don't want people to try to um, send you bad URLs that when you click on those bad URLs, they send you to a different site that does a post request to your API and tries to do some malicious things. So that was an overview of like what cores is. Uh, kind of talk about the same origin policy. Also talked about how you can kind of fix cores and the proper way to set this up in production, which would be if you have a real domain, you'd be like mydomain.com. And that's what you'd have to set up when you deploy your API to production. You don't want any other browsers requests coming from any other domain to hit your APIs and like pretty much allow it to easily go through. Now I will say this, this doesn't protect your API from any requests. Like I could load up Postman and I can load up curl and I can still hit your API just fine. Like this doesn't prevent anything from hitting your API. All it helps prevent is browsers from making those requests in some scenarios. All right, so let's talk about scenarios. Like why, why is this important? How does this help us out? And I think this diagram and this URL that I'll put in the description kind of explains it pretty well. Basically, they have a scenario where you are a user, you log into a bank. That bank is going to basically set a cookie on your browser, right? So you're kind of authenticated now. And then somewhere along the line, like someone sends you an email that is malicious, that has a bad link. You click that link and that takes you to badguy.com. And when you go to badguy.com, it sends you back a page that looks like your bank, but it's not really your bank website. And inside the code of that website, they actually start making requests to your apibank.com to try to do something bad. Like maybe they're doing a post request or something. Again, the way the browser works, when you do a post request to a domain, so for example, api.bank.com, that doesn't match your current browser, so they would be on badguy.com, remember, it's going to send that pre-flight options request firsthand, and that's going to fail because your API, the secured bank API, is going to say only allow um, requests from bank.com, right? So that's kind of like what the pre-flight stuff all kind of handles, right? Um, now, I will say that you still want to have like HTTP only secure same site cookies because there probably are ways to still abuse this. But even in the same scenario with like a GET request, 
uh, since the get requests don't really do this pre-flight check, the data is going to come back from the API, but it's not going to be readable by the browser, right? So bad, badguy.com, even though the data comes back, they're not going to be able to read it. So like, what can they really do with it? Absolutely nothing. Um, now I want to say that I don't think this, the same origin policy prevents cross-site request forgery, because I believe if you have a form on a page, like if I were to just go to like my page here, if I had a form and that form had a method of post and then an action of like, I don't know, send money or something, dot PHP. So when someone were to like submit this, I'll just add a button here that says like submit. And then I'll add like an input name of hello. Okay, so when someone actually goes to that form and submits it, remember the pre-flight only happens for certain scenarios. So like when the content type is application JSON. But in this scenario, I made a form that does a request. And if you look here, it makes a request to send money PHP. It does a post request. Um, and the content type is application x www form URL encoded. Now, if you go back to the docs here, let's look at that scenario of what is considered a simple request and what is not. So in this case, application x www form URL encoded is considered a simple request. And that is why we don't see like a pre-flight check that happens here. So someone could still basically get you to go to a bad website. They can automatically submit a form when the page loads that has some information on it. And that can hit your API and your API would process that. The same origin policy, everything we just talked about does not prevent this error. But I think if your API is using, it like only accepts application slash JSON content types, then I think the pre-flight checks would potentially prevent issues. But if you're not using that type of RESTful API and you're doing more traditional like server-side rendering with, you know, uh, postbacks and stuff like that, that's when I believe you'd have to worry about the cross-site request forgery. So again, I want to say like, I'm not a security expert. So if I explain anything poorly, like call me out in the comments so other people can learn from like what's not right and what's, what is right. But I think a lot of the stuff I did explain in this video is a good introductory to like same origin policy cores, why we do it. And I'll put all these links, like definitely go and read stuff for yourself. Like don't just trust what people say online because we are all humans and we'll say stuff incorrectly sometimes. And I'm not like a security expert, but I will put these links here. So feel free to dive into those and try to understand like how some of the stuff works. Cause I do think it's important understanding security as an, as a web developer, even if you're a front end developer is still important to kind of understand because you don't want to make a website that is insecure and have your users data leaked or have their, um, or have some malicious actor come in and screw up with your user's data. Anyway, I hope this was like an okay overview. I don't really know if I missed anything. Let me know, please. Um, other than that, uh, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly. Or just get some assistance if you're trying to learn something um, in coding. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.